So let's go ahead and talk about this one. So, um, like I said, uh, I, I, I personally think that the, uh, the Faraday's Law and the magnetism and the right-hand rule stuff is probably the hardest um, portion of the course. But, you know, this isn't, this isn't really a cakewalk either. But if you remember your rules for trigonometry, that will help you solving any of these problems that we give you in optics. Because ultimately, um, optics is a very uh, trigonometric trigonometrically based um, study. So the first thing that we want to do, uh, I've, I've already done here, and that's actually to draw some similar triangles that we get from this. So we can see where these triangles come from. The first one comes from this top part where I draw the ray from the top of the flower to the mirror, and then I complete the triangle with the x portion and the y portion. And then the second triangle comes from doing the same thing for the bottom. So I draw this ray that goes from the mirror to your eye or where your observer is. And then I draw in what the uh, x portion and the y portion are. So ultimately, we have these two similar triangles here. Now, because of the law of reflection, I, I said that there's some angle theta 1 here and there's some angle theta 2 here. How can I relate this angle theta 1 and theta 2? They're equal to each other, right? So theta 1 is equal to theta 2. So we'll, we'll use that a little bit later. Now, the, the thing that we, we want to do for each one of these triangles is to set up a relationship between this angle theta and what the sides of the triangle are. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this top triangle right here, and I want to determine what this x portion is. So what is the x portion for this triangle? D. It's D, right? Because this is going to be the distance distance from here to here, which I can look down on this x-axis as the distance d. How about the, uh, the x portion for the big triangle? It's going to be 2d, right? Again, because what I can do is I can go to this triangle in the picture, and I can see the horizontal distance for the big triangle is going to be 2d. Now, we have the x portion of this. Now we need the y portion. So in order to determine that, let's look at the big triangle. What is this length here? This is going to be y, right? I can, I can just read that off right here. This is, this is y. And then the last one that I need is this portion right here. What should that one be? It should be h minus y, right? So this is h minus y. Because the total height of the flower is h, so that's, that's this distance here. And then if I take away what that distance y is, I'm left with what this distance here is. So this is h minus y. And so now what we can do, because we have some adjacent and some opposite side to this angle here, what I can say is tangent of theta 1 is going to be equal to h minus minus y divided by d. And tangent of theta 2 is going to be y divided by 2d. Okay. So now we're going to apply our law of reflection that says that this theta 1 is equal to this theta 2. And because theta 1 is equal to theta 2, tangent of theta 1 is equal to tangent of theta 2. So I can set these two equal to each other, because what I'm saying is tan theta 1 is equal to tan theta 2. And that's, that's equivalent to plugging this in here and plugging this in here. So I have h minus y uh, divided by d is equal to y divided by 2d. I can cancel my d's. So that's kind of interesting, right? Because we see that um, as long as this, the distance from the observer to the flower and the distance from the flower to the mirror is the same, then uh, the height of this is independent of what that distance is. And then I have a, a, an equation that looks like this. h minus y is equal to y divided by 2. I move this y to the other side, and so I say h is equal to 3 halves y, or y is equal to 2 thirds h. OK? And that's it. Any questions about, about this one? OK? When you're facing off the d's, would you just get rid of the 2? Like, since it's 2D, 
you're, you're, you're dividing by D by both sides, wouldn't you be left with one D on the right side? Uh, right, so this is, um, this is two times D, not D squared. Yeah. Right. So if this was d squared, then yeah, that, that's what you have. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. Um, all right. So move on to the next one. So now when we look at this, is going to get into our discussion of our discussion of um, spherical mirrors. And when we talk about spherical mirrors, we talk a lot about virtual and real images. And th this is kind of a precursor to that. So uh, for this planar mirror, is the, is the image that we see of this flower uh, going to be real or virtual? Uh, so talk about that and, and think about what, what that means. And where, where is the image going to be? Where is the image for this going to be? So where, where should the image of this flower be? Is it going to be on the same side or the opposite side of, of this? It's going to be on the opposite side, right? Because what I can do is I can follow where this line goes through the mirror, and that's going to be where the top of this flower is going to be. No, I didn't, I didn't draw it exactly the same. And this, this kind of follows our, our intuition, right? When we're getting ready in the morning and we're looking at the mirror, the image that we observe is going to be on the other side of the mirror, right? Okay. And well, it, it, this can be a little bit confusing when we're talking about the, the planar mirrors, but when we get to the, uh, the spherical mirrors, I think it'll make a little more sense when we do our, our ray diagrams. Okay, so this brings us into our, our spherical mirror. So what we know about spherical mirrors is they distort the image in a way, so it doesn't end up being one-to-one -one in size, right? When we have a planar mirror, uh, if I'm looking at myself in the, in the morning, if I'm shaving, which I clearly don't do very often because I don't care to shave, right? But uh, you, see, you see exactly one-to-one, -one, right? Now, if you have some spherical mirror, some mirror with some curvature, you can have a magnified image or a distorted image. And this is what you actually see with your car rearview mirrors, right? You have this little sign that says objects in mirror may be closer than they appear. And it's because the fact that this, um, this mirror for your car has a, a slight curvature. Okay, so when we're talking about spherical mirrors, there's two types of mirrors that we can have. We can have concave mirrors. So concave mirrors are uh, like this one that I have over here, if you, if you can see this. This is curved this way, and the reflective surface is on the inside of where this curve is, right? And then you can also have what are called convex mirrors, and convex mirrors are just the opposite. So for convex mirrors, the uh, reflective surface surfaces on the outside. And, and so you can see here, uh, this is getting into our drawing of ray diagrams, um, where you have some, uh, some principal axis that goes through the mirror that's perpendicular to the plane of the mirror that intersects that, and uh, some radius of curvature. So we'll, we'll, get to, uh, we'll get to those questions later. But what I want to do now is I want to actually lay out what all of the rules are for drawing lens diagrams. And when you see this list, you might be like, wow, that's a lot. But um, once you do it a couple of times, it, it makes sense. So these are going to be our ray diagram rules. OK. So the first one is to determine where the radius of curvature is, keeping in mind that the radius of curvature and the focal length are related via two times the radius of curvature, or sorry, two times the focal length is equal to the radius of curvature. Okay. The second one that you want to do is you want to draw a ray that passes through the radius of curvature. And goes through the mirror.
Typically when I draw these, the, the part that goes through the mirror I'm going to show is a dotted line. This is what's called the C-ray because it's the, the radius of curvature ray. The next one that you want to do is you want to draw a line that goes from the top of the object parallel uh, how did I word this? Parallel to the axis uh, to the mirror. And this is called the P ray, P for parallel. So this is part A of three. Part B of three is extend. Uh, hold on, uh, I lost my spot. Okay. From the point, the P ray hits the mirror. Need another piece of chalk. From the, P, from the point where the P ray hits the mirror, draw a line through the focus, extended in both directions. Okay. Four, we're almost done. So four, we want to draw a line from the top of the object through the focus. This is what's called the F-ray to the mirror. B, extend this line parallel to the axis. Okay. Now the last part, all of these lines are going to intersect at some point. So five point of intersection is where the image forms. Okay, so I'm going to leave this up here because what I'm going to do first is I'm going to do an example of this for you guys. And then I have um, a worksheet that will take you through a whole bunch of different uh, arrangements of where the object can start. Can you guys pass these out for me? Where the objects can start and where the images are going to form. Okay, so let's look at how we can, how we can do this here, and I don't have a pen. Can I borrow a pen? <laughs> or a pen. Yeah. Yeah, my or a pencil, pen. whatever. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. 10 points to Gryffindor, okay. All right, so now let's go through these uh, examples. So uh, let's go to the dot cam and project this on both sides. Okay, so I don't have my steps in front of me, so I'm following them exactly the way I have it written. Okay, so first thing we need to determine where the radius of curvature is. Now, for this example that I have here, 
for this example that I have here, I actually label where the radius of curvature is. You might not always be told this. You might be told where the focus is. If you're told where the focus is, the radius of curvature is just going to be two times that focus. Okay. So we determine where the radius of curvature is. Here it is. Now, the next thing that we want to do is we want to draw a ray that goes from the top of the object through the center of curvature uh, and then through the mirror. Okay. So I have this ruler here. And this, this mirror should extend down here a little bit. So I'm going to draw this line that goes here. Now, when I get to the mirror, I'm going to draw a dotted line here to represent that it's going through the mirror. Okay. Now, the next one that I want to do is I want to draw, so this is uh, what's called the C ray. Okay. The next one that I want to draw is a line that goes from the top of the object parallel to the mirror or parallel to this, to this axis, right? So this goes through this axis, or it goes parallel to the axis. Now when it gets to the mirror, what I want to do is I want to have this ray reflected so that it goes through the focus. So it goes through the focus, and then do a dotted line to show where it goes through the mirror. Okay. Now we can already see an, an intersection here, but we want to confirm that that's actually where the, the true intersection should be. And so we'll do uh, the next piece. So this, is, this was the, uh, the P ray. So this is P ray. Now we want to draw the F ray. So the F ray goes from the top of the object through the focus to the mirror. And then when it gets to the mirror, it goes parallel. OK. So I could have been a little bit more careful with the way that I, I drew this so that these actually did intersect. Um, but you can see that there, there's a point here that, that comes very close to where it intersects, and that's where the Im image is going to be. So we can draw the image here. Okay. Now, let's, let's look at this image and see what we can say about it. How does it compare in size to the object that I started with? Is it the same size? Is it larger? Is it smaller? Small. It's smaller. Yeah. Uh, how about the um, how about the orientation of it? Upside down. It's upside down, right? And so this one started pointing up, and now this one is going to be pointing down. Okay. So go through. Um, the, uh, the worksheet that I gave you, uh, it has a whole bunch of different examples of where these, uh, where these objects start at and uh, find where the images are going to be. Now, you might look at the, the example that I did here and say, well, why, why did you even bother drawing these lines that go back through here? It wasn't important for this one, but you'll find uh, for some of them it, it will be because the, the image or where these lines intersect will be on the other side of the mirror. Okay, so then this is, um, this is my F ray as well. Okay, so go ahead and um, work on this with, uh, with your neighbor and then we'll come around and talk to you guys about it as you're going through it. Through the first page uh, quickly, so you guys can see that. Okay. So the center of curvature for all of these is actually the same. Uh, so this is a distance of one, two, three, four. So this is one, two, three, four. So let's draw first our C ray. C ray comes down like this. Okay. Then uh, what was the order that I did here? Did I do P ray or F ray next? Um, P ray is next. So P ray goes from the top of the object to the mirror and then through the focus. Okay. And then the last piece uh, is going to be the part that goes through the focus. So this is the F ray. Through the focus. And then parallel. So I, I kind of cheat because I know it should, should intersect there, but it should look like that. And then our image looks like this. So this image is going to be inverted, smaller, and real because it's on the same side of the mirror. Now let's look at the next one. So here, 
first draw the C ray. Now I, I changed what I said here uh, in the instructions, so make note of that. Um, the the C ray doesn't have to go through the mirror. It might go through the mirror, and this is an example of where it, it actually won't. So C ray is always going to start at the top of the object and then go through the center of curvature. So that's actually just this vertical line here. So then the next one we want to do is the P ray. So P ray goes to the mirror and then through the focus. And then we have the F ray. So this is going to go from the top of the object through focus and then go parallel. Okay? So this one is going to be a real image. It's inverted and uh, it's the same size. Right? This is, then this is real because it's on uh, the same side as uh, the object is. So now let's do this one. So our center of curvature is here. We can draw this line for the C ray. Okay. And then our P ray. And then our F ray. Now this one isn't going to exactly line up because there's some uh, some dimensional uh, scaling that we need to take into consideration when we're drawing this um, this mirror. So this this curvature of this mirror needs to actually match what this uh, radius of curvature is. And if the the arc of this mirror doesn't actually have that radius, then you you're going to end up seeing things that are off here. But ideally, what we what you would have is um, this would be here. And uh, what that means is this is an inverted image. It's larger and it's real because it's on the same side. Okay. Now this is the one that, that was a little bit tricky because. Up until now, we've had all real images. This is the first time we're going to have a virtual image. So for this one, we need to make sure that we extend these rays backwards through the mirror. So this goes here. This goes backwards through. So that's our C ray. And we have our P ray. And then our F ray. Okay, and so we see that the intersection is roughly right here. And what that says is that this is a virtual image that is upright and larger than the original uh, object because this is on the other side of the mirror. Okay. So go ahead and take uh, a couple more minutes to, to finish these ones and then we'll talk about those. Let's talk about these, uh, these last three and actually I'm only going to do one because we, what, we've, what I'm sure you've seen going through these is they behave almost exactly the same way. So first ray is going to go through the center of curvature from the top. We have our dotted line. Now the size of them is going to be different, but the, the process is going to be the same. So now we do our P-ray. So P-ray goes from the top parallel to the axis, hits the mirror, goes through here. Okay, it goes back that way too. Um, and then our F-ray. F-ray goes this way. <coughs> And then parallel. So this one, if I was a little bit more careful, we'd have a better intersection, but it should intersect about right there. So what we're seeing is that this uh, image is going to be um, smaller, and it's going to be upright and virtual. Okay. So now that we understand how to do these ray diagrams, let's look at some 
have some questions about them. So this needs to be showing the laptop. Okay. So I won't ask this question again. Actually, I, I never opened up Learning Catalytics, or did I, for this question? Okay. So let me open up Learning Catalytics so we can get, get credit for this. So now, now that we've done this activity, I think we should have a better idea of, of what the answer should be for this. Okay. So for this question, where is the image going to form? Now you can refer to our ray diagrams where you can try to draw this again. So based on our ray diagrams that we've done already, this actually corresponds to the first ray diagram we did, right? So look at, look at where, the, uh, where the object is relative to the center of curvature and the, the focus. And then look at what your answer was to the first uh, question here. And that'll tell you where this uh, image should be and whether it's uh, upright or inverted. Uh, actually, it only, it only asks uh, where, where it's going to form. Okay, so based on our drawing, or if, if you wanted to, to draw this a second time, what we saw is that this image is going to be inverted and it's going to be between C and F. So the answer should be C. Okay, let's look at the next one. Now our object is in between. Where is this image going to form? So again, for this one, we can either draw this again or we can refer to uh, the ray diagrams that we've already done. And so if we look at uh, the third question, we see for, for the third question, our object is between C and F. And when we drew the ray diagram there, we had an inverted image that was going to be to the left of C. Okay, so the answer should be A. Okay. Now, what about this one? Okay, so this one corresponds to question four. So for question four, we had the object between the focus and the mirror. And so for that one, when we drew a ray diagram, what we ended up seeing is we had some virtual image that was on the other side of the mirror. And uh, that virtual image was larger and upright. Okay. So then let's look at this last one. Where is the image going to form for this one? So for this last one, we could look at any one of the um, uh, ones on the back. And what we saw there was that we would have some uh, virtual image that was going to be between the mirror and the focus. Okay, So this should be C. All right. So this is just a a couple of pictures of what these mirrors are going to look like. So you've um, certainly seen convex mirrors before. Um, you, I already, already kind of talked about that. Um, so this is uh, a demo that we actually have set up over here. So uh, after class, you can come and take a look at it. Okay, we got that. 15, 14, 15. Okay, we got that. 15, 14, 15. Okay. I don't get it. What? <laughs> well, my name is Bruce Janey, and today I want to share a piece that I had my students take a look at, you know, a study of lenses and mirrors. Now, it's a fun piece, and it simply gets students thinking a little bit more about what happens to light when it's reflected off different shaped surfaces. Now, let's take a closer look at it. Here's the eye piece. This is what you look for. And when we push this button down, this light goes on. And at this end, we have a concave mirror. <coughs> we'll continue turning it around here. Take a look at the other side. Pretty much the same from either side. Once again, I put down the button, that light goes on. And what I'm really concerned with is looking through this eyepiece. So let's take a look together. Now I'm going to push down on the button a few times. I'm going to flash this light on and off. And if I look outside the eyepiece, push down the button, we can see that's the bulb we're looking at. And once again, from in the eyepiece, push down the button, there's the bolt. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to unscrew that bolt, push down on the button again, and hey, there's the bolt again. Where is it coming from? I look outside the eyepiece, it's not there. Look in the eyepiece, push on the button, and the bulb appears. 
So as you can see, there's no bulb in the socket, but yet pushing on the button and it won't fuse. Put the bulb back in again, down, there it is. Take it back out, push down on the button, and it's still there. So the whole question is, where is this coming from? The first part of the answer has to do with that mirror at the end of the device. It's a concave mirror, and we know that concave mirrors will reflect an image and invert it, which means it's going to flip it upside down. The rest of the explanation has to do with that box that that light and socket is sitting on. Now, if we were to take a closer look inside the box, we would find a second bulb and socket mounted directly underneath the first one, upside down. <laughs> Here's a simplified version of what's actually going on. Here we see the two bulbs, they're not lit. I push down on the button, they both come on. But we don't see that second bulb. Now if I unscrew the top bulb... That's some first stop animation there. That lower bulb, which is upside down, might up and its image will be reflected and inverted, or in this case, turned right side up, so that it appears where that upper bulb is supposed to be sitting. Now let's take a closer look at this piece. Here we can see both bulbs, and if I push the button down, we'll both light up, there we go. And if I remove that upper bulb, and push down on the button, just the lower bulb lights up, and that's the image that is reflected and inverted, so that it is going to appear in that empty socket at the top. Looking at the bulb from a different angle, it doesn't work. I have to look straight on and that bulb to appear. And that case puts us in the right position for this work. All right. So, like I said, we actually have this set up um, over here, and like you said, you have to be at the eyepiece to be able to see it. So, as you're leaving today, uh, what you can do is you can stand over here and see that we actually we don't have a, a bulb on the top, um, but we do have one in the box. So, if you if you stand right about here, this is a little off center with the mirror. Um, that you can you can see that the bulb and you can probably maybe see it from here but from where i am right now it, it looks almost exactly like there's a bulb in the socket okay so okay so the next thing that we want to do is we've we've done this in terms of ray diagrams uh but what we really want to do is to be able to talk about how can we calculate based on uh, what the distance to the object is, what the height of the object is, what the height and the distance to the image is going to be. And this leads us to what's called the mirror equation. So what the mirror equation says is one over the distance to the object plus one over the distance to the image is going to be equal to one over the focus. Okay. Now there's a lot of different combinations that you can you can get with these these things, and it tells you something about whether the object is inverted or if it's um, a virtual or a real image. So I'm going to add two more equations here for magnification. So. What these equations say, the first one says that the magnification is equal to the negative times the distance to the image divided by the distance to the object. And this is also equal to the height of the image divided by the height of the object. So we're already seeing that there can be some kind of funny things that go on with, uh, with negative signs here. And so let's talk about specifically what that means for uh, whether something's real or um, imaginary. So, or a real or virtual. So if the distance to the image is greater than zero, this means that this is a real image. Now remember, when we're talking about these, when we're talking about what, what these distances are, positive refers to, positive refers to being on the same side uh, of the mirror as the object, and negative is going to be on the opposite side. Um, okay. Yeah, you, you didn't. Oh, yeah, thanks. Press the dock cam button, but I didn't press the project button. So this is, these are positive distances, right? Because they're on the same side as the object, and then these are negative 
distances. So we're saying that zero is relative to the mirror. And on the same side as the object is positive, and on the opposite side is negative. So real images are going to have positive distances. And likewise, negative uh, uh, distances to the image are going to be um, uh, virtual. Now, we can also say something similar for uh, the height of these uh, things. So the height h sub i, if it's greater than 0, this is upright. And if it's less than 0, this is inverted. Now, the last thing that we can talk about in terms of these equations are what's the meaning of the magnification. So if the absolute value, I'm running out of some room here. So the absolute value of m, if this is greater than 1, then the image is larger. If the absolute value of m is less than 1, the image is smaller. And if we look at the value of m, if the value of m is greater than 0, it means that you have an upright image. And if the value of m is less than 0, you have uh, an inverted image. Okay. So now that we've, we've set up these equations, let's do a couple of calculations. So we'll, we'll start, start one right now, and then we'll, um, and then we'll see where we are. Uh, for next class. So was this the first one or the second one? Yeah. OK. OK. So now I give you these values, and I want you to figure out where the image is going to be. Uh, what is the distance? Or I, I actually, it's the opposite. It's the opposite. So I, I tell you um, what the distance to the image is, and you're meant to find the distance to the object. OK, so in order to figure this one out, we're going to apply the equation that you can't see anymore, so the, the mirror equation, to say that 1 over the distance to the object plus 1 over the distance to the image is equal to 1 over the focus. So 1 over di plus 1 over df, or sorry, d, oh, I did the same thing, uh, is equal to 1 over f. And so we tell you that we're, we tell you what the distance to the image is and what the uh, focal length is, so we want to solve for DO, so DO, 1 over DO is equal to 1 over F minus 1 over DI. We can invert this. And so when we plug in the numbers, we end up seeing that this is uh, 74 centimeters. Okay? So we'll pick up with uh, more of these questions the Tuesday after spring break because the next class we're going to have a review for the exam. Okay? So that's going to be it. So on your way out, make sure you, you check out this demo because it's, uh, it's a pretty cool one. And there's another one over here too.